Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Tesmertek. I'm a doctor and the Vice President of Medical Affairs at North Memorial Health Hospital in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. I also happen to be a quilter and a sewer. This is an unprecedented time with the COVID-19 pandemic. I know you're all wondering what you can do, and I was wondering the same thing. On a day off this last week, I started to look on social media and the internet, and everything was lighting up on how to make reusable cloth masks for healthcare workers. That's why I decided to make this video, to teach you how to make a cloth reusable mask. We know the most important thing is to protect our patients when we're caring for them, and to protect our healthcare workers and team members when we're working with them. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. Here's what we're making today. This is a fabric mask made of six pieces. It's very simple. It should take you about 20 minutes to make. I base this off of the Olson mask pattern from Unity Point Health in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. My example has different colored fabrics for the different pieces so that you can easily see the parts. But there's two pieces in the face and on the back, two pieces to make the mouth and two pieces to make the cheek. Here's what you'll need to get started. I want to be very clear that we don't want you leaving your home to get these materials. We want you to use what you have at home and that means you're going to have to use up your fabric stash. So start with densely woven cotton material, a scissors or a rotary cutter, some all-purpose thread, pins. I like a pen to keep me on track for which edges I'm working on, especially your first couple. And then the hair bands are what we're using to attach your mask and use behind the ear. Again, we don't want you leaving your home to get these. These can be attached at North Memorial Health after you get the mask to us. Okay, so you've got your fabric laid out and it's two layers, right sides together, and then you're going to cut out uh, two pieces from each pattern piece. So you'll end up with two face pieces, two mouth pieces, and two cheek pieces. Once you've got your two pieces, our next couple of steps are pretty easy. You're going to sew your two face pieces together uh, on the curved edge. So we're gonna use a quarter inch seam through this whole pattern. So don't worry about anything besides that quarter inch seam. Next, you're gonna sew your mouth pieces together along the curved edge. And then open up your mouthpiece and we're gonna finish off that straight edge of the mouthpiece. So I want you to take each uh, straight edge, fold it over a quarter inch and then sew um, just down that seam. So it ends up just being a top stitching so that you're creating a nice finished edge. Now you haven't done anything with your cheek pieces yet. So now you're gonna take your cheek piece and on the longest straight edge, side six, you're gonna fold that edge over and also sew down a quarter inch seam. Again, you're creating a finished edge for the inside of the mask. All right, for me, this is the toughest part of the mask. Now you have to overlap your mouthpiece and your cheek piece. So you have your finished cheek pieces. So your cheek pieces have that nice uh, finished edge and you're gonna overlap that cheek piece on to the mouthpiece. So the two pieces that are going to overlap are the mouthpiece or mouth edge five with the cheek edge six. I think you'll get the hang of this once you make one or two. But for me, for the first one, I drew this dotted line that you see on the pattern piece. It is about one and three quarters inch in from the edge. I drew that dotted line right on the back of my piece of fabric. And now you're creating a dart so that you can make the pointed arrow of the mask. You're just doing a little tuck here, tacking it down because we're attaching the pieces together. Now this is the only time you do want to do a back stitch. So do your back stitch here to reinforce this seam. And we're gonna do that on the top and the bottom. You can stop before you get all the way there. Do your back stitch. This is gonna be under a lot of tension for the person who's wearing it. And then remove. So your end piece ends up looking like this on the back. It's a little more challenging to see. But on the front, what happens is you've got this nice top stitching and I used a contrasting thread here so that you can see that one inch tack down of the two pieces on the top and the bottom. And then this is how you're gonna end up with your pocket on the back of the mask for your filter. So even though it's a little challenging your first one or two times, uh, it's worth it in the long run to make that pocket. Now for the fun part, we get to layer the front of the mask and the back of the mask together. 
It is important that you orient the top and the bottom correctly because the top has a little bit more space uh, for your nose. So make sure that you refer to your pattern piece and remember uh, that one is the top side of the mask. Same thing with the mouthpiece. One is at the top of the mask. So I'm gonna lay my right sides together. Use your pins to make sure that you have everything lined up. And once you get that pin together and lined up, then you're ready to put the two pieces together. So you can sew a quarter inch seam all the way around. Uh, don't forget that as you sew around your quarter inch seam, you have to stop a quarter inch from the edge, pivot your material, and then sew again. So stop about a quarter inch from the edge. You're not just sewing end to end. Stop about a quarter inch, pivot your material, and then continue to sew around until you have a quarter inch seam all the way around the mask. So here's my uh, mask with the front and the back sewn together, and I'm going to be able to uh, turn it right side out just by going through the filter pocket here and here. So we'll turn it around. Remember at the beginning, I said it was handy to have a pencil or a pen on hand so you could mark your pieces. And it's also handy in this step because if you uh, put the ballpoint back in or have an unsharpened pencil, then you can use that to help turn your corners. If you've got a lot of bulkiness um, on the corners and your corners aren't turning exactly like you want, you can trim the corner edge without cutting the stitching and that'll help you avoid that bulk on the corner. Now this is how your mask is gonna look uh, with that finished edge and you can stop there, especially if you don't have any uh, hair bands at home. We'll finish this mask at North Memorial Health. If you have hair bands at home, then all you need to do for that hair band is put it on the end, roll the edge over, uh, and do a top stitch to sew it down. Just like that. And there you have it. There's the front of your mask and the back of your mask, all sorts of nice finished edges. Good to go with a filter pocket on the back uh, for a healthcare worker. Whether you're an experienced quilter or a brand new novice sewer, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. And I really hope that you all make it through the challenging part of attaching the mouthpiece to the cheek. That's the part that gets me every time. As a doctor, I want to personally thank you for all that you are doing to watch out for your frontline healthcare workers. You are really making a difference. We are so glad that you are a part of our North Memorial Health family.